This is part of the training for the Inventory of Initialized Top Cards. This video training is intended to assist with pulling and editing a Hummingbird report. So the first step of editing a Hummingbird report is actually pulling it from the website. You'll be navigating to the Hummingbird website, and if this is the first time that you've been on this website, you'll actually be presented with a portfolio page, so that's where we're starting. The portfolio page gives you all of the options that Hummingbird provides for its website. For our purposes, we're going to go to the Next Fair tab, and then we're going to go to the Analysis tab. For inventory, the only report that matters is A102, which is the device transaction history, so we're going to choose that. And now we're presented with a page where we fill in the information that comes from our initialized tap card receipt. So if you were to have a set of initialized tap cards, you would pull the receipt and check the date that the cards were tapped, as well as the time that the cards were tapped. If you want to pull an entire day, which is generally a better idea, you can always leave these at 12 o'clock a.m. and change the bottom one to 11.59 p.m. and that will pull the entire day of information that has been tapped. It's important to pull it from 12 to 11.59 because M pauses actually do have a short delay time in when information is put into them and then it's uploaded onto the server. So just to make sure you capture all the information you need, you're going to want to pull whichever date from 12 o'clock a.m. to 11.59 p.m. You can also change this and pull multiple days at the same time. However, that does take a lot longer. Hummingbird reports can take anywhere from five to 20 minutes to generate, depending on how much information you pull at one time. So the general rule of thumb is to pull one day at a time and then maybe load the next report while you're working on the one that you've already pulled up. On this sheet, the only other section you need to worry about is where it says, please enter device IDs. On each MPOS, there is a POI number that is followed by five digits. POI uh, actually tells the system that this is an MPOS, and the five digits tell them which one. In this case, we're pulling information from POI 00059, POI 00003, POI 30204, and POI 30203. So find the corresponding number on your MPOS, fill it into the section. You can choose one or multiple, depending on how much information you need and then you're going to go down to run. It will take you to this screen, which is where we're generating our report. And just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the report that I've already pulled. However, once this loads, you're going to see options up here in the gray bar. And the one that you wanna choose is CSV. A CSV file is going to download as an Excel file. I'll go back to that once it loads and give you an example, but let's start on this. So once you load the CSV file, this is the information that's going to pop up. Obviously, there's a lot of information on the sheet that we don't need. So what we're going to do in this training is show you how to edit this information to get what you actually need. The first thing you're going to do is delete rows one and two. It's information that you don't need. And then you're going to delete columns A and B, columns D and E, and then columns G through P. If you're following along on the training document that came with this video, there are actually these same steps. So go ahead and follow them as I'm talking through them. There we go. Okay, so now we end up with two columns. We have column A, which is actually our card numbers, if you take a look at that. We're going to be editing those in a minute, but that is our card numbers. And we also end up with column B, which shows us both the fact that these cards are initialized and issued. Now, when a card runs through the system, it becomes initialized and issued at the same time, which means that it's a good card. We only need to have one set of those numbers, not duplicates. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose the first value in column B. Go sort and filter, and then we're going to search for issue. Once we find the issue where it starts, we're going to highlight all of this information you can do control shift right and then control shift down and that'll pull you down. And we're going to delete all of this because we don't want duplicate numbers on our sheet. So now all we have left are one set of card numbers and our initialized values. The next step you're going to do is highlight both of these and click insert. So now you have four columns. You have column A and B are empty, 
column C is your card number, and column D is initialize. Now obviously we need to change up this information so that it looks correct on our sheet. And we know that card numbers always start with zero, which this does not. We're gonna take care of those all in one step. So the first thing you're going to do is put in the information for the formula that you need. We use the concatenate formula. Push plus and type in con concatenate top pop up at the top, double click it. You're going to choose B1, put a comma, choose C1, close parentheses, and enter. So now you have your number all laid out for you. Now obviously it's still missing the zero, but we put B1 as our first value. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight B1 and we're going to fill in zeros. The easiest way to do this is just to fill in the first three highlight them in the anchor on the bottom right corner you're going to hold it or you're not you're not going to click it yet I'm sorry you're going to hover over it and then you're going to double click and that fills in all your zeros you can do the same thing on this side with your formula hover over the right hand anchor double click and that fills out all of your information for your formula you don't have to drag it down so now we have column E filled with our formula with our formatted number column C, which is where we had our information from, and column B, which is filled with zeros. Column E is almost finished. However, if you look up here, each one of these is a formula, and we don't want to copy paste a formula because it actually messes up the system on the sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy it, and then we're going to paste it over column C, but we're going to paste special. When you click Paste Special, you're going to click Values, and that's going to copy over only the numbers that are in that column instead of the formula. So now we should have a nice column full of numbers that are not a formula. And now that you have those over here, you can delete column E. We don't need that anymore. And you can clear contents from column B because we don't need our zeros anymore. They're already nicely secured in here. So you have four columns again. Column A, which is empty, column B, which is empty, column C, which is your card number, and column D, which is initialize. And that is essentially how you format a Hummingbird spreadsheet. If you need more help with the inventory portion of this, go ahead and check your paper uh, training. Remember, the first step is always to search for the first card number in the box and double check that the second card number is correct, and then to do the same with the last two cards in the box. Just to show you what a blank inventory sheet looks like, in case you're curious about that before this training is over, this is where your information that you pull from Hummingbird is going to go. The box number comes from the sleeve that you're working on. It should be on the front, on the little label. The so, uh, soft serial number comes from the cards that you're working on. So for instance, if card 16066, let's copy that over, goes here, and the soft serial number for it is 1234. That's how your information would look in this sheet. So your soft serial number comes from your card, your card number comes from the report, and you double check it on the card. The box number comes from the sleeve you're working on. Initialize will always be initialized because that is what it says in our sheet here. The expiration date comes from the receipt. The writer class also comes from the receipt, and so does the product. So if you were to copy information from your Hummingbird report to here, just as an example, let's say we have card one, two, three, four. This is card one, two, three, five, and one, two, three, six. Oops, let's go back, there we go. Oh, and if that happens, easy fix, just click back again. One, two, three, six. And let's say that these are the cards we have in our box. You're going to copy over this entire section to your blank inventory sheet, and that'll fill out everything that you need right here. The only information that you're going to need to copy for, or that you're going to need to manually input uh, is your box number, the expiration date, the writer class, and the product that is on the cards that you're working on. And before we go, let me give you an example of what pops up when you've finished a report. We have an option to do a PDF, an option to do a CSV, and out of those two, the one that you're going to want to click is CSV, and that CSV report is going to show up as the A102 file that we've edited on this video. And that's it.
please uh, let us know if you have any questions and good luck.